All right, we're going to do a demo here of some basic uh, some uses of the charts that we've been talking about in class. Um, we're going to start with a headwind crosswind chart. Um, we're going to first uh, establish our conditions here. So runway heading in this case, we're going to say is 180 with the winds at 230 at 15 knots. We need to figure out our headwind and our crosswind. So if, to do that, we need to first find our angular difference between our headwind, or sorry, runway heading and our um, our wind, which is 230. So we take 230, subtract 180, and we end up with a 50 degree difference. So 50 degrees, we enter our chart at the 50 degree mark and travel downward until we hit the uh, 15 knot radial line, which denotes how high our wind speed is in this case. So the 15 knot radial line is a, we can kind of imagine it, it's a line right here and once we hit that line we um, draw a line straight down from there to find our crosswind component, in this case approximately 11 knots and our headwind component, in this case approximately 9 knots. Alright, moving on to our takeoff distance chart again, coming straight out of the FAA test supplement, we'll establish our conditions our outside air temperature in this case is 25 degrees centigrade. Our field elevation 4,250 feet. Our altimeter setting is 3002. Takeoff weight of 2,800 pounds and our headwind from our previous chart will use 9 knots. First we need to find our pressure altitude and to do that we need to subtract our current altimeter setting from the standard altimeter which yields a negative 0.1 or inches of mercury. 0.1 negative 0.1 inches of mercury. Then we take that number and add that or sorry, multiply that by a thousand for our standard uh, one inch per thousand foot lapse rate and we end up with a correction factor of negative one hundred. Then we take that number and add that to our field elevation for our pressure altitude of four thousand one hundred and fifty. Uh, side note, this method eliminates the need to figure out whether we add or subtract as the signs take care of themselves. I prefer the other method because it's just what I've always done and I know I taught that in class I think I confused a lot of you so we'll just uh, kind of standardize on this method that'll help you guys uh, sort of understand things and the signs will take care of themselves just remember to always subtract your current altimeter setting from the standard altimeter and then keep the sign whatever it ends up being positive or negative as you do your multiplication um, and you'll end up with a positive or negative number which you then always add to your pressure altitude or to your uh, your uh, field elevation to find your pressure altitude. Alright, so moving down to the chart, let's first of all compensate for uh, density altitude and the chart does that automatically by taking the temperature 25 degrees into account. We take that uh, 25 degrees, we draw a line straight up to our 4,150 foot pressure altitude and then a line straight across to our reference line starting right there at the reference line and then paralleling the guidelines down to 2,800 pounds which is the weight of our airplane. From that point, we then draw another straight line across to our second reference line where we will account for our wind component. In this case, we have a 9-knot headwind. We do the same thing. We draw a parallel line down to intercept the 9-knot line and then again drawing a line straight across to our third reference line. This third reference line, we draw another straight line out and we can find our ground roll, in this case approximately 1,200 feet, and we can also find our uh, distance over a 50-foot obstacle, in this case approximately 2,000 feet. Alright, so now we're going to move on to a cruise power setting chart, um, and this will give us our true airspeed and fuel flow for a cruise, and we've determined that our, uh, for this example we'll plan a cruise of 6,500 feet at 65% power. Now the only chart we have here is 65%, so we need to remember that in most books, we have multiple choices. Uh, typically, 75. You'll actually typically have like a max continuous power cruise, and uh, maybe a 75 percent, and maybe a 65 percent, and a 55 percent. So in this case, with the FA has only given us the 65 percent max continuous power chart, and uh, we find that underneath the uh, title of the chart itself. So um, we've also added to our conditions here that uh, ISA is plus 15 um, at our forecast out at our altitude of 6,500 feet. Um, so we will need to do some interpolation. First of all, we only have uh, ISA minus 20 standard and ISA plus 20. So we need to find true airspeed in gallons per hour for ISA and ISA plus 20. At 6,000 feet, since we only have 6,000 feet and 8,000 feet as, an, as uh, our choices over there in the pressure altitude column, 
At 6,000 feet, we need to find ISA plus 20 and ISA. At ISA plus 20, our fuel flow is 11.5 gallons per hour, and our speed, true air speed, is 161 knots. We need to find these numbers for every um, figure that we're going to interpolate for. So we need to find um, 11, we need to find fuel flow and true air speed for ISA plus 20 at 6,000, standard at 6,000, as well as ISA plus 20 at 8,000 and standard at 8,000. We're going to have to do multiple levels of interpolation um, to find uh, our numbers. So ISA, or standard, is 11.5 gallons per hour and 158 knots. Incidentally, it's nice that our fuel flow is the same across the board here, so the only thing we're going to have to interpolate for is our true airspeed. At 8,000 feet, ISA plus 20 is 11.5 gallons per hour at 164 knots, and at 8,000 feet for a standard day, we are looking at 11.5 gallons per hour and 161 knots. So now we can move on to our interpolation process and uh, take our six, our, our uh, four sets of numbers and basically eliminate the fuel flow because it's 11.5 gallons per hour for all four sets of numbers. That makes things easy with regard to the fuel flow. So we still need to interpolate for true airspeed and uh, we need to find it for ISA plus 15 which is our actual temp. Once again since fuel flow is the same at 11.5 gallons per hour we will not need to interpolate for that. For true airspeed we do our cross multiplication proportion, we set it up like this. We subtract 158 from 161 to find the difference between the two, which is 3, and then we subtract uh, ISA plus 20 from, I, or sorry, ISA from ISA plus 20, which is obviously 20 degree difference. That sets up the left side of the proportion, and then uh, we set the equal sign and X above the difference between 161 and I'm sorry, not 161, the difference between our ISA plus 20 and ISA plus 15, which is obviously 5. Then we do our math. 5 times 3 uh, is 15. We divide that by 20. We come out with 0.75. Then, keeping in line with the beginning of the problem where we subtracted 158 from 161, we subtract 0.75 from 161, and that yields our true airspeed at 6,000 feet at ISA plus 15 of 160 0.25 knots. For 6,000 at ISA plus 15, fuel flow is 11.5 gallons per hour and true airspeed is 160.3. We can just round up to that 0.3. Now we do the same thing for 8,000 feet and we get the following. For 8,000 at ISA plus 15, fuel flow is again 11.5 gallons per hour. True airspeed is 162.3 knots. Now we can interpolate between those two numbers to find, find our final number for ISA plus 15 at 6,500 pressure altitude. So again, since the fuel flow is the same, it's still 11.5 gallons per hour. So there's no interpolation required for that, and it's 11.5 gallons per hour. Now we interpolate for our speed. And we just do the same thing that we did before, but this time we look at the difference between 6,500 feet and 6,000 and 8,000. So true airspeed, we do this again. We find our difference. In this case, the left side of the proportion is going to have our difference between the um, true airspeed of uh, 6,000 and 8,000, which is a uh, negative 2, because we're going to subtract um, our uh, 6,000 number from our 8,000 number. I'm not sure why I did it this way, but it works, and maybe it's just a good way to illustrate to you. Notice all the signs are negative here, so they kind of take care of themselves. But uh, So if I take 160.3 and subtract 162.3, I end up with negative 2. If I take 6,000 and subtract 8,000, I end up with negative 2,000. That's the left side of the proportion. On the right side, I set my x above my uh, difference between uh, 6,000 subtracting or subtracting 6,500 from 6,000, which again is a negative number, negative 500. X equals negative 0.5, 160.3, which is our number that we originally subtracted from for our original difference. 160.3 subtract negative 0.5 is basically adding 0.5, and so we end up with final numbers for. 6,500 at ISA plus 15 of 168.8 true airspeed and a fuel flow of 11.5 gallons per hour. Now let's look at our landings. So same basic uh, idea here is the takeoff chart and we will 
set the basic uh, conditions at the same, except for this time we'll use a little bit lighter aircraft weight to account for a hypothetical fuel burn. So our pressure altitude in this case, again, 4,150 feet. We're just going to land at the same airport. The outside air temperature, again, 25 degrees. The altimeter is the same at 3002, and our weight's 2,600 feet, or sorry, 2,600 pounds. I have a foot symbol there. That's a mistake on my part. And our headwind, again, is 9 knots. Again, we will take our pressure altitude and our temperature and create a density altitude. So the chart compensates for that for us. So we go over there to 25 degrees and draw a line straight up to our uh, pressure altitude of 4150. Then we draw a line straight across to our reference line, once again accounting for weight, this time down to the 2600 pound line, and then straight across to our second reference line where we'll compensate for our wind, this time again to the 9 knot line, again paralleling those guidelines, and then a straight line across to our obstacle uh, reference line, straight out for our ground roll on the touchdown, which in this case is approximately um, a thousand feet and then over a 50-foot obstacle looking at about 1700 feet. So landing rolls about a thousand feet over a 50-foot obstacle we have up, I'm sorry, I guess I wrote 1600 there, it's hard to tell from this distance. Alright, so here's an alternative landing distance chart. This one's going to require some interpolation. So same conditions, 4,150 foot pressure altitude, but a little warmer this time, 30 degrees C. Different airplane, 1,600 pounds, and the same 9 knot headwind. Alright, first we have to check the notes on these kinds of charts. So that first note, decrease distance is shown by 10% for each 4 knots of headwind, equals a 20% decrease for us. In this case, we're not going to round up. It's more conservative just to say uh, we can get uh, 20%. Um, so uh, at uh, 9 knots, so shown by 10% for each 4 knots of headwind, we have a total of uh, 9 knots, which is 8 knots goes into that uh, like wholly, so we get 20% decrease uh, from that note. The increased distance by 10% for each 60 degree Fahrenheit temperature increase above standard does apply to us. However, in this case, um, when we'll, as we'll find once we do our calculations, uh, we are still a little bit cooler than 60 degree Fahrenheit above standard. Interesting to note, this chart is in Fahrenheit, and we'll get to that in a second. The third note uh, does not apply to us because we're going to uh, be departing from a, or sorry, landing on a hypothetical uh, solid surface runway, not a uh, dry grass runway. So we have to convert centigrade to Fahrenheit. And to do that, we take our uh, conversion factor of 1.8, we multiply by our 30 degrees centigrade, and then we add 32, and that yields 86 degrees Fahrenheit. And just a quick check, um, a standard temperature is uh, the standard uh, temperature, let's see, the difference between the standard temperature at um, 4,150 foot pressure altitude is less than 60 degrees Fahrenheit, so note number two does not apply to us in this case. But we do need to interpolate between the 2,500 and 5,000 foot columns since we are at 4,150 foot pressure altitude. So 5,000 minus 2,500 equals 2,500, or sorry, um, equals 2,500, and 5,000 minus 4,150 equals 850. Our ground roll difference between the two columns is 495 minus 470, that's 25 feet. So we set up our proportion at 2500 over 850, and then we uh, set the, other, the ground roll that we've already figured at 25 feet, looking for the ground roll cor correction factor that corresponds to our 4150 foot pressure altitude. X equals 8.5, 495 minus 8.5, again keeping the, uh, the subtraction um, consistent with what we started with, which was the 5,000 foot side, um, equals 486.5. Then we do 486.5 times 0.8 for our win, which yields a 389.2 um, ground roll. So ground roll equals 389.2. We still have to do our temperature compensation, and like I said before, our note says we must compensate for um, temperatures each 60 degrees Fahrenheit above standard. The standard temp at 4,150 pressure altitude is 73.94 degrees Fahrenheit. So we actually don't need to apply the note, as I said before.
That is where we're going to, this chart takes into account uh, temperature, sort of a different way of doing it than the graphic based chart that we looked at before. To clear a 50 foot obstacle, we do the exact same thing we did for the ground roll and run the proportion. So 2500 over 850 equals, in this case, the difference between the uh, 50 foot obstacle clearance. Uh, um, distance 1195 minus 1135 and that yields 60 feet and then we put X in that same position find for X is 20.4 1195 minus 25 20.4 20 again keeping the subtraction consistent 11,000 or sorry 1174.6 then times 0.8 for the headwind and uh, that yields a takeoff over a 50 foot obstacle of 939.7 Hopefully this helped you and did not confuse you anymore. Um, give me a call or send me an email if there are any more questions. Um, we will be quizzed over some of these things, so make sure you're understanding these concepts. The in-class quizzes will start to include some of this stuff um, probably Wednesday um, the uh, 7th is probably when we'll start having some of these problems on our in-class quizzes. Thank you.